Hey there, fellow and soon to be Deathwatch players, welcome to 10th edition. In this video, we are going to take a closer look at the freshly released 10th edition index cards for the Deathwatch, including the corresponding points costs, of course. In the first part, we will go through the relevant rules and data sheets for getting started with the Deathwatch in 10th edition. In the second part, we will then look into what could potentially work well for us when building our new army lists and what is better left on the shelf for the time being. Lastly, there will be my personal conclusions and a quick summary of what has been covered. Welcome to Swiss Hammer, your channel for modeling in Warhammer 40k. My name is Temmer and I will be guiding you through this video. Diving right into the index cards, which have been made available for free on Warhammer Community, and will be our rules up until an actual Deathwatch Codex or supplement is being released later over the course of 10th edition. Note that when picking Deathwatch as a Space Marine chapter, we are still considered Adeptus Astartes, meaning that we get the Oath of Moment Army rule from the vanilla Space Marine Index cards, and we can of course draw from the regular Space Marine units, similar to how it worked in 9th edition. As explained under the Space Marine Chapters rule, chapter-specific units now have the corresponding chapter keyword on the datasheet, and you cannot include more than a single chapter in your army. This means when picking Deathwatch, we get our exclusive Deathwatch units, the vanilla Space Marine data sheets, but we cannot soup in some Sanguinary Guard from Blood Angels, or Gilliman from the Ultramarines or something like that, as these come with a different chapter keyword. But returning to the Deathwatch army rules, here we get our unique kill teams that once more allow mixed units, but with some interesting changes. First of all, mixed toughness works just like before, the majority of the models decide the toughness of the unit, and in case if there is a tie for the majority, the higher value wins. Interestingly enough, for the purposes of boarding transports, kill team terminators, bikes and jump pack units count as two models, but they can board any transport the unit can embark within, meaning that bikes and terminators in kill teams can board draw pots and rhinos now for instance, pretty damn hilarious. For the purposes of interacting with terrain features, all models are treated as infantry, aka our bikes and kill teams can still drive through walls, at least they let us keep that one as well. And that's basically it for the Deathwatch army rules already. What follows now is the actual detachment rule, the Black Spear Task Force, which you can pick if your army faction is Adeptus Astartes. Technically, you could also take the regular Gladius Strike Force detachment from the vanilla Space Marine Index, but without spoiling too much, as it currently stands, you really want to go with this one when playing Deathwatch. But anyway, this detachment places unit restrictions similar to what we already had in 9th edition, AK no Assault Marines, no Attack Bike Squads, no Devastators, no land speeder storms, no scouts and no tactical marines. Note that the Sternguard veterans are absent from this list of exclusions. We then see the return of mission tactics, which now works a little different. We can pick one of three different tactics at the start of our command phase, which then lasts until our next one, but we can only pick them once per battle, AK this will only be available 3 out of 5 rounds. The Furor Tactics unlocks Sustains Hits 1, aka additional hit on crits, to adapt as a star is units army wide, Malleus unlocks Lethal Hits, aka Auto Wound on Crit, and Purgatus unlocks Precision, aka Sniping Attached Characters. All of these provide strong additional benefits to a Deathwatch army, and perhaps it goes without saying, but given that you will only have it available army-wide for 3 out of 5 rounds, and only one usage each, pick these wisely, AK if everything is hidden during the first turn, and no real opportunities present themselves, obviously skip them for these kinds of battle rounds. 
Moving on to stratagems, here we have six of them, with half of them being the new implementation of special issue ammunition, aka Hellfire Rounds, Dragon Rounds and Dragonfire Rounds respectively. The cool thing here is that they only cost 1 CP and they can either apply to two kill teams or one other Adeptus Astartes unit excluding vehicles and they work on all ranged weapons. Yes, that's right, no more Deathwatch Bolt gun only. Furthermore, you cannot stack them, aka if you select one type of round on a unit, they cannot also access another one on top. Now, you guys have no doubt heard about the Hellfire Rounds Mortal Wound spam by now, that caused quite the uproar across the community, at least for the two days that it took for GW to nerf them. This might have been one of the fastest fixes in the history of Warhammer 40k, with the rule not even making it past the launch date. This continues the 9th edition trend of GW being lightning fast about limiting death watch, but then leaving everything else broken for the remainder of the edition. Anyway, while this combo definitely deserved its nerf, I sure hope that they will address other issues with similar motivation. That aside, I want to point out that all three stratagems will now have their play and the ability to use them on two kill teams for the price of 1 CP is excellent. For anyone disappointed by how GW handled special issue ammunition in 9th edition, this is certainly a great comeback. For the other three stratagems, we have Armor of Contempt, which reduces the AP of attacks by one on one of your units when targeted, we have Teleportarium for movement shenanigans, and Adaptive Tactics, which allows to pick a different mission tactic on the unit it is being played. Just like with Special Issue Ammunition, both Teleportarium and Adaptive Tactics work up to two kill teams for the price of one CP, which is yet another great incentive to bring along some kill teams. Next we have Enhancements, which replace Relics and Warlord traits from 9th edition, a change that might already sound familiar for anyone who already played some boarding actions in Arcs of Omen. These now cost points rather than CP, so you can think of them a bit like what we used to have with Specialisms. What clearly stands out here is the Thief of Secrets, which is a complete steal at 15 points only. The Beacon and Chalice could also be a solid alternative, assuming that one can spare the 30 points in a list. I think these will be the main two enhancements used in competitive play. Tomb of Ectoclades would be quite useful rules-wise, but given the price tag of 40, I think we are fine with Oats and our other powerful army rules already. Then last and certainly least, I don't think anyone is going to pay the 20 points for an Osseus key, given the alternatives. With the detachment rules out of the way, what about our datasheets? Well, as we kind of predicted, kill teams are now datasheets. In the near future, I will be releasing a full kill team guide for each and every kill team, including kill team Cassius. As such, for the purposes of this video, I will be focusing on kill teams in general and how they changed in 10th edition. First, the good news is that we still have the Proteus, the Fordis, the Indometer and the Spectrus kill teams with pretty much the same datasheet compositions based on armor types. There is also an additional benefit for 5 out of 6 stratagems when used in combination with kill teams as we've seen earlier. But this is pretty much where the similarities to 9th edition end. Back in 9th edition, and especially during the times of the Army of Renown, Deathwatch lists were almost exclusively made of kill teams. They were our troops choice, aka OPSEC, and we would often make use of combat squads in order to give some additional benefits to more powerful datasheets that would otherwise not have them. The unfortunate part is that we have to let go of this kind of mindset. In 10th edition, we no longer have combat squads, and kill teams are not battle line units, aka what used to be troops, coming with an OC value of 1 only. 
The exception here is bikers, which come with an OC value of 2, but we are limited to including only two of the more powerful datasheets like bikers in most kill team compositions, so you will not get to see four outriders and an intercessor sergeant wandering off through walls on their own anymore. What further stands out is that we are now paying fixed points for kill teams at either 5 or 10 models, no discounts, and this kind of shoehorns us into having to make sure that we are not overpaying when compared to running individual squads. To further stress this point, all kill teams pay a premium for their 5 core models compared to the individual datasheets, and some of the kill teams, like the Proteus, pay on top of that even for max size. This is similar to what happened towards the end of 9th edition, when suddenly most war gear for Deathwatch vets became free of cost, but their base price went up. Speaking of free war gear, this has not changed for 10th edition either, but we now have the additional layer of complexity due to paying per kill team rather than per model base. When joining kill teams, the datasheets now lose all abilities, but gain some selected new ones instead. Personally, I think that this changes the role of kill teams significantly, where we no longer think of them as our main bulk of the army, but rather as a sort of special chapter unit, like we for instance see in Blood Angels with Sanguinary Guard or Death Company. In contrast, this benefits our Death Watch veterans, which are our battleline units with an OC value of 2 when played as an actual Death Watch veteran squad. They are very nicely priced at 20 points per model, and they still come with plenty of interesting war gear options, all free of cost, mind you, and a strong reroll hit ability. They also have the kill team keyword, meaning they benefit from the stratagems just like the actual kill teams. This is quite the shift from 9th edition, where we would pretty much always take them in a Proteus kill team only, in order to unlock more powerful datasheets. To conclude on the kill teams, I am not suggesting that they won't be seeing play anymore. On the contrary, I think both the Proteus kill team as well as the Indometer look pretty promising, but with what we currently know in terms of rules, I believe we will see an average of around two kill teams only in the more competitive lists, while I most definitely expect Deathwatch veteran squads to perform very well on their own. But anyway, more on this in the dedicated kill team guides that I will be releasing in the near future. Looking at the remaining datasheets, for HQs, the Watchmaster can attach to both a Proteus kill team and Deathwatch veterans, and he comes with two great abilities. Strategic knowledge allows the unit to shoot and charge after advancing and falling back, and the Watchmaster ability allows to increase the stratagem of your opponent by 1 CP after it has been used. Together with his solid stats line, and costed at 115 points only, this makes him a very good pick overall. Perhaps a bit surprisingly, Watch Captain Artemis might actually see play this edition, as he allows the unit he's attached to access to a stratagem that has already been played this phase, and they can also use stratagems while Battleshock. Assuming that Battleshock will play as big a role as currently expected, this makes Watch Captain Artemis a very solid investment at 75 points only. For reference, a regular captain is priced at 80 points. Then further good news for our firstborns are veteran bike squads. Back in 9th edition, they suffered from the lack of the core keyword, and they got pretty much butchered by the free war gear changes due to a completely unwarranted points increase. Back in the days, I suggested to leave them on the shelf for the time being. In 10th edition, however, they come with an OC value of 2, they still have access to the turbo boost ability, and they are reasonably costed at 28.3 points per model. Even though they are not battle line, this still makes them excellent at snagging objectives. Deathwatch Terminators of course benefit from the Terminator overhaul, but they are also paying a price increase for it, 42 points per model, which is only a single point above the regular Space Marine Terminators, so they got off well overall. I do however think that these are best incorporated into Proteus kill teams, as we can still take up 4 of them, and the heavy weapon limit of 3 also still remains in place.
One notable change here, however, is that the Thunder Hammer, Storm Shield and Cyclone Missile Launcher combo is gone now, as the Vorgear rules specifically mention that when switching to Cyclone Missile Launcher and Storm Bolter, the ladder can no longer be replaced again. I hope you guys magnetized. Then a personal favorite of mine is also seeing a comeback, our beautiful unique flyer the Corvus Blackstar. At toughness 10, 14 wounds, stealth, disembarking its cargo after moving, and being able to fit an entire kill team, regardless of combination of models. Yes, that's right, you can fit a kill team of 10 regardless of what you pick. I fully expect this one to see competitive play in 10th edition at its current price of 180 points. Anyway, I will be doing detailed datasheet reviews in the near future, but on first glance, our unique datasheet outside of kill teams are looking very solid, especially our firstborn models. As far as the Deathwatch Index is concerned, Primaris won't be replacing firstborns anytime soon. With all the rules and datasheets out of the way, what does this mean for the Deathwatch? Well, back in the early days of 9th edition, my Deathwatch assessment used to be that Deathwatch will always be as good as the kill teams, because as far as I'm concerned, we had strong kill team rules, but quite limited army rules when compared to some of the other Space Marine chapters. 10th edition might just have flipped things around a little, as we now have both powerful mission tactics and very good detachment rules, while the kill team themselves are far more limited in terms of mixing units and making use of abilities. They are also paying a premium in points, just for being a kill team, which appears to punish running them at 5 models only, so at first glance, I would say either go 10 or don't bother. As I was mentioning earlier, I think competitive lists might average to kill teams only, while we might see Deathwatch veteran squads return as our bread and butter unit at the very affordable 20 points per model, especially as these have the kill team keyword and as such get full synergy with the stratagems. Having said that, I still think that kill teams will be an essential part of our army lists but most likely in the role of a 10-man murder brick supported by the SIA stratagems. This looks especially good on Proteus and Indometer kill teams. Proteus kill teams in particular stand out here, because they still allow up to 4 Terminators, 3 of which can take heavy weapons, the Wets have plenty of good Wargear options left, and you can attach either the Watchmaster or Captain Artemis, both of which look highly competitive. For anyone with a good stock of firstborn units, this might be the moment to bring back veteran bikers and the Corvus Blackstar, or several for that matter. As far as the regular Space Marine datasheets go, we are no longer locked out of Sternguard veterans, which are looking solid overall at 210 points for a full squad of 10, and the Bladeguard veterans plus to this year combo has already been making the rounds, and keep in mind that we could also give him the Thief of Secret enhancement, on top of already being a strong character to begin with. Beyond that, Boulder Inceptors even slightly dropped in points, and their weapon stats line has been massively improved, and Desolation Marines at 24 points per model only, definitely expect these to stick around. Infantry aside, Vehicles got a massive overhaul and transports got interesting options with firing decks and disembarking after moving, so I expect to see some of these sneaking back into our lists. All in all, my personal takeaways are as following. Deathwatch is starting 10th edition with strong army rules and detachment, giving us massive army-wide benefits through the combination of oats and mission tactics, as well as having cheap access to stratagems that can even be used on two units with the kill team keyword at the same time. On the other hand, and given the limitations placed on the actual kill teams, I think that we are going to see a complete reverse from the old 9th edition kill team strike force kind of gameplay. While I think that kill teams will still have their place in the average competitive army list, I think their amount will be far more limited and mostly played as 10-man murder bricks in combination with our decent stratagems. 
Instead, we will have to rely far more on some of our other unique data sheets, mainly Deathwatch veterans and veteran bikers, in order to play the missions well. I also think that using a variety of vanilla Space Marine data sheets, ranging from Stern Guard, Desolation Marines, Blade Guard veterans, and even vehicles will work much better now, because it comes down to the army and detachment rules rather than the kill teams giving us the biggest benefits. Either way, what I really appreciate is that GW took another attempt at making special issue ammunition work, and I think they came up with a decent enough solution, even after the emergency nerfed Hellfire rounds prior to the actual 10th edition release. On the other hand, I cannot help thinking that kill teams fell victim to the whole simplified but not simple approach. With the loss of combat squads, points based on squad size and everything having to fit on data sheets, I think this took away much of what used to make them fun to play in 9th edition. But everything is of course new at this point, and we have to see how it plays out on the table. Either way, great times ahead for Deathwatch players. To wrap things up, over the course of the video, we have looked at the Deathwatch 10th edition index and relevant Monitorum Field manual points changes. What perhaps stands out here is that contrary to 9th edition, Deathwatch now has their own strong army and detachment rules. This includes mission tactics offering 3 rounds of army-wide benefits. Fuhrer Tactics unlocks sustained hits 1, AK additional hit on crit, Malleus unlocks lethal hits, AK auto wound on crit, and Purgatus unlocks precision, AK sniping attached characters. Furthermore, the detachment rules unlock powerful stratagems, including a completely reworked special issue ammunition, working on all ranged guns, as well as several good enhancements to pick from. These basically replace Warlord traits and relics, and now cost points instead. What stands out here is the Thief of Secrets, a cheap 15 points upgrade that can turn a character into a real beat stick. Kill teams on the other hand have undergone massive changes. While we still have the Spectres, the Fortis, the Indometer and the Firstborn Proteus kill teams, these drastically changed in terms of amount of data sheets that can be added, and we are now paying a fixed points cost for either the minimum of 5 or the max 10 models, and there are no more combat squads. At first glance, this seems to incentivize loading up on the most expensive models and free war gear, in order to break even on the additional points tax that seem to be placed on kill teams by default. While kill teams will most certainly still see play, this nonetheless shifts the focus on some of the other unique data sheets, with Deathwatch veterans in particular looking most excellent. 20 points per model, battle line, OC2, plenty of free weapon options, as well as the kill team keyword, meaning that they can benefit from synergy with stratagems, just the same as any actual kill team, good stuff. Veteran bikers are also likely to see a comeback, and so does the Corvus Blackstar, the Watchmaster and even Watch Captain Artemis, which are all looking excellent. In the near future, I will be doing a full Kill Team series once again, dive deeper into the points changes and review all the relevant datasheets for 10th edition. All in all, what a great time to play Deathwatch. So that's it for the Deathwatch 10th edition index and the relevant Monitorum Field Manual points changes. How do you guys feel about these massive changes to both the Deathwatch and the game overall? What is your take on the kill teams? And what kind of units are you going to include into your lists? Let me know in the comments. Then finally, if you made it this far and I still have your attention, if you like my content, any additional support is greatly appreciated, as it helps me invest into future videos. For that, I have both a coffee as well as a Patreon page, links are in the description. Furthermore, I would also like to mention that there is a Swiss Hammer Facebook page, where I will be posting links to my videos, as well as articles I find of interest. I do read a lot about the hobby, but not all of it will always end up as its own video. I look forward to seeing you there as well. As always, thank you very much for watching guys. Your continued support is greatly appreciated. I hope you have been enjoying this video, give me a thumbs up if you did, and don't forget to subscribe if you haven't done so already. Thanks again and see you next time.